And there are chapters. Los Angeles Audubon is a chapter. We are, as I say, a small but mighty chapter. We only have five paid full-time staff. We do not have a brick and mortar office when we're not working on site, we're working out of our homes. Some chapters truly are birding clubs still, where it's mostly people who just want to come and bird with each other. Our chapter is extremely focused on education, which is why I'm here, um, and the conservation and restoration. We've done tremendous work We're doing restoration of the Baldwin Hills Scenic Overlook, which is east adjacent to Culver City. I recommend highly you go there. It was to be a housing development. Neighbors fought it off, and now it is California, one of California's new state parks, great visitor center, and all the plantings that you see in front of the visitor center at the top of the hill was restoration work done under the leadership of Margot Griswold, who's the president of our board. So LA Audubon, we do a whole lot on a budget of about $400,000 a year. That's it. So all the outreach, the restoration, all these school tours we do on a shoestring. Um, but we serve thousands of people every year and we're very proud of that. We also do bird walks because our philosophy is that if people don't know about it, they don't care about it. If you don't care about it, you don't want to save it. So that's, and I, unfortunately, with my big mouth, just scared a green heron that was over there. We are now at the Tide Gate for the last tidal flow in and out of the wetlands. Iona Creek, and remember from Sentinella down, it's all muddy bottom. I've got cormorant flying over. Cormorant, sea fish. Most birds have hollow bones. Cormorant's bones are relatively dense. It allows them to be low in the water and get better able to dive. If you're super buoyant, you can't go deep, right? So the cormorants are not as buoyant as some of our as some of the ducks. The ducks that just tip their little bottoms up, those are called dabbling ducks. The ones that are able to dive with the dancer bones are diving ducks. All right. And Walter, I will let Walter take it away from here. Walter. Yeah. Diagrams. Then as the water moves 
in, you have this. Different types of burns and how they are constructed. And here you can see, at least on the outside, the rock wall. Um, at Bayona, there are different ideas floating as to what would be within the berm, but likely some sort of structural element. As you can see, these types of levees are quite massive, and the amount of habitat that it will displace is, is, is large. Um, it will not allow for habitat to be on it because the levees need to be in, maintained for their integrity, which animal control uh, has to be on alert, if you will, for inspections to make sure that you don't have any rodents burrowing into these areas that may then cause a breach that would then grow through time and hence why you have all the grasses so that they can be inspected regularly and you also don't have any tree roots that may also breach the integrity. So when you're talking about introducing new levees all around Biona, you're talking about introducing something that will destroy habitat uh, from a standpoint of even having it be land available as habitat. It won't be. This levy happens to be up in Eugene, Oregon. a reservoir and before you in 1923 and actually before but 1906 to 1909 and then 1920 they had various lawsuits and cases so this got mis me realigned and different things happened, but at, on this USGS map, what's important is the federal government determined that the channel should run and stop here. And this is their mark there, where fresh water that comes down is let, let go into the fresh water wetlands that was already existing. It is, did not go through the, like it does now into the marina. See, now it goes and then the high and low tides come up at that before, see the difference right here? Right at area A, right here, you can see that creek line. And so the original Bionic Creek was here, then they channeled it, but they still dumped the fresh water here. They did not mix it or inundate this with more salt water like they want to do in alternative one, two, and three. This is about fresh water.
here's area A. So they want to rip all this out and, and then have that be salt water intruded and it was never like that. And what's important about this video and what I'm explaining is that it shows that this was fresh water before but it was made purposely fresh water restored again by the fresh water restoration of the channel. So they can't say that they're restoring anything. If they're going to restore it, it should be to this alignment and this source of water which we can get from Playa Vista's uh, fresh water right here. In the EIS, we have to go for the fresh water alternative. The Army Corps made this determination. So they can't get permits to tear the four, in the 408 scheme they made with the county and the 404 with the uh, Fish and Wildlife and the BWER here that, to change it into salt water. It's just fraud. This green area is all going to be in salt water because we know the tides go up to 10 feet on that um, it's quite a bit of material six to nine um, million cubic yards of materials this is all fresh water here sitting out creeks right here water went this way it went this way you know it, it mingled and created that's that's the estuary mingled there but but this area a part you know, it, it's, it's fresh water. I'm going to show you what was not shown by uh, the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission, uh, Bay Foundation, the Coastal Conservancy. They didn't, they used the the T-sheets for their agenda, but they didn't show what I'm going to show you. This is the original. The, um, the ones that were added, uh, by a research team that made it more accurate, but they, those were not used if it didn't help the the conservancy and the bulldozing, saltwater inundation. When you look at this, here is the Biona Creek and another stream. Just to give you some bearing, and it shows this open water section. And the green is vegetated wetland. The information wasn't used properly or accurately. And it was only used by the, the you know, Coast Conservancy and them and Bay Foundation to uh, shore up their agenda. I think it was um, a flat with just fresh water that would hold like a pond. You see where this is fresh water. It doesn't add up that this would be tidal, nor does this, because here's the fresh water from the creek. I think the fresh water was actually coming down that way. It was intertidal, but it wasn't tidally influenced. So I think they've got it labeled wrong. But um, when you look at it that way, it, does, it still doesn't justify what they're saying with this being uh, open water and here, you know, having the rest of it be vegetated wetland, and it's not supported by the conclusions of salt water. I'm hoping that um, when you folks look at this, you'll see what what we're looking at and the reasons why it should be left as a um, freshwater alternative, not bulldozed, not salt water inundated, and have this be a feature of. Um, restoration like I put in my video. I think we can have a pump station here where this dumps into the Bionic Creek channel and then have it the water cleaned up so it's it's usable and more natural and then redistribute it appropriately in these areas. A lot of it, a lot of the reports that were done for the Bionic Wetlands Ecological Reserve EIS and EIR didn't have these details and they didn't use the coloring. So that's why I thought it was important to do this. The fresh water alternative that I came up with, which is a blue and a green arrangement that would work there with one pipeline. This is the pipeline. We would have a pump station running through a Driscoll line, probably about a four four inch diameter line and it would run all the way through 
and have sprinklers and a rain burn, larger sprinklers, so it pretty much cover all the area. This graphic is the trees on area A. You can see the water coming from the fresh water the pipeline would go through there and then feed all this, like I explained. And all these palms and, that, and all the cleanup from SoCal gas would have to happen to get their uh, and separate to get their oil infrastructure out and cleaned up. I'm just kind of flying around and showing you the kind of how it would look in different places. We kind of looked before and, and what it looks like, what it looked like after we got the fresh water in there. It's a huge difference. But it would be a big increase in habitat and of course the animals and all that. And uh, that would be the best way to restore that area A and it, it also can include parts of B. But for them to use this and have the artist draw this in a deceptive manner, show their pattern and behavior, uh, just expressing my opinion. Uh, you folks can look at the information inside here. So this is only the view blockage of the webbing that they don't have any graphics on. So I've, I've made these as I put here. And that applies to all of it that I'm showing you. This way is the uh, Fiji way. So the open space will be locked. This is on uh, Fiji way right near the end. About 20 feet right here. So you will not see from Fiji way the wetlands anymore either. Jefferson and where it gets colder, that view will be gone forever. It's person only protection for flight. This feel like this is a violation of coastal act. They can't obstruct uh, views in the coastal zone. So you will not see the wetlands anymore. That we should have a freshwater alternative, which we're working on here. So these lines right here are the levees. And they're cutting out the existing channel from here all the way to here. But you will not see the wetlands anymore. These, these levees are 25 to 30 feet above the road. This is a grading plan for alternative one. The, the main grading is gonna be in area A, which is across here. That's where the channel would be now. And then all the material from Lincoln to Fiji Way all the way around uh, basically around the south end of the marina and then um, they're going to carve out and excavate and apparently re remount it. They're going to leave SoCal gas this thing here for some reason. For me personally that uh, that was a Mary Small and uh, some other people at a meeting about almost uh, nine years ago that they were planning on um, uh, selling the dirt to the port um, so the port could build larger sipperts in the San Pedro Bay. Um, they use steel, uh, Chugman steel, corrugated, and then they pump out the water and they fill it with dirt and they create a, a big shipper. They've done those before. They're basically uh, artificial islands. But um, I have plans that show their uh, haul routes and how they're going to barge it down the the channel and then tugboat it to San Pedro and, and the port of LA but because um, that's the only way they would get that much dirt. Um, their cal the, the, the report's calculations are just under 3 million cubic yards so a cubic yard is a yard cubed if you picture that much material um, they're talking about 3 million of those and basically that's a square mile, 10 feet tall of dirt, uh, if you want to do your own math. We have our salt flat has a bumblebee uh, in the 
summertime half of the lot, rainy season is over, the salt flat it becomes a native bee habitat for uh, burrowing down into the sediment and, and, and you know, bees lay their eggs. And then there are chapters. Los Angeles Audubon is a chapter. We are, as I say, a small but mighty chapter. We only have five paid full-time staff. We do not have a brick and mortar office when we're not working on site, we're working out of our homes. Some chapters truly are birding clubs still, where it's mostly people who just want to come and bird with each other. Our chapter is extremely focused on education, which is why I'm here. Um, and the conservation and restoration, we've done tremendous work. We're doing restoration of the Baldwin Hills Scenic Overlook, which is east adjacent to Culver City. I recommend highly you go there. It was to be a housing development. Neighbors fought it off, and now it is California, one of California's new state parks, great visitor center, and all the plantings that you see in front of the visitor center at the top of the hill was restoration work done under the leadership of Margot Griswold, who's the president of our board. So LA Audubon, we do a whole lot on a budget of about $400,000 a year. That's it. So all the outreach, the restoration, all these school tours, we do on a shoestring. Um, but we serve thousands of people every year, and we're very proud of that. We also do bird walks because our philosophy is that if people don't know about it, they don't care about it. If you don't care about it, you don't want to save it. So that's, and I, unfortunately, with my big mouth, just scared a green heron that was over there. We are now at the tide gate that allows tidal flow in and out of the wetland. Bayona Creek, and remember from Sentinella down, it's all muddy bottom. I saw cormorant flying over. Cormorant, eat fish. Most birds have hollow bones. Cormorant's bones are relatively dense. It allows them to be low in the water and get better able to dive. If you're super buoyant, you can't go deep, right? So the cormorants are not as buoyant as some of our as some of the ducks. The ducks that just tip their little bottoms up, those are called dabbling ducks. The ones that are able to dive with the denser bones are diving ducks. All right. And Walter, I will let Walter take it away from here. Walter. Talking about. Uh...